Hi, and welcome to my series on learning 3D LUT Creator. In last week's video, I demonstrated what a powerful tool for mask making 3D LUT Creator can be. This week, I'm going to show you how to steal that mask right from the 3D LUT Creator software and bring it into Photoshop for you to use on any kind of adjustment layer you would like, with or without using a LUT. Now, if you'd like to review some of the material I've covered in this 3D LUT Creator series before, I'm going to leave a link to the playlist up above. And if you find content like this useful, I would truly appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. Now let's get to the video. In last week's video, we covered how to construct a mask in 3D LUT Creator and discovered that while 3D LUT Creator applies the mask to the LUT, it does so internally and doesn't give us access to that mask. I'm going to leave a link to that video from last week up above. Now, it's so relatively easy to make complex masks in 3D LUT Creator that it would really be great if we were able to access those masks we make there and use them within Photoshop to continue working on our image in any way we want, with or without a LUT. Today, I'm going to show you how that is very easily done. So let's bring an image into 3D LUT Creator from over in Photoshop. We'll come down here, click Image from Photoshop, and there's our photo. I have an image of some tomatoes. And let's say we wanted to make these green stems here greener. And also, maybe even work on them in any number of different ways over in Photoshop. So I want a mask that selects for those green stems, but not the tomatoes themselves or the background. I want to take that mask and be able to use it in Photoshop however I want. So let's click over to the Masking tab. So the first thing that I might try is to make the mask based on color, the color of these stems. I'm going to do it quickly, but if you need a refresher, I went through it very slowly and step by step in last week's video if you'd like to have a look. So let's go to the drop down menu here and choose Hue. And now I'm going to run my cursor over these green stems here so I can see, based on that straight line, where these pixels lie in terms of hue. And we can see, as expected, that they're, they're in this region. So I'm going to quickly make a mask. based on that color. Let's make it something like this and have a look with the preview. Well, it turns out that the background has quite a bit of the same color in it, even though it looked different. And it would be hard to just paint it out because some of the areas of butt areas within the stems that you know, are right next to it. And it will be hard to just paint this region out and have a very natural looking edge. We can try to narrow the colors down a little bit here. But as you can see, uh, it turns out that trying to select those stems by color is not really going to be a very effective way of doing it. Now, I'm going to try something else that was actually in one of the comments last week, one of the viewer, Hayes09, I probably mispronounced that, suggested I take a look at the, well, let me reset this first, turn off the preview, that we look at the 3 DHSL method of selection. Now, this is paints a 3D mask based on hue, saturation, and lightness. And how do we choose which hue, saturation, and lightness? Well, it's the hue, saturation, and lightness that we run our cursor over. But in this particular time, we need to be holding down our left mouse button as we move this eyedropper over the area we want to choose. And you'll see it, it'll, the software will start mapping the HSL of what's underneath the eyedropper in this region. 
So I'm going to put this here, the eyedropper here. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button, and I'm going to run this cursor sort of all along what looks like representative colors and lightness of these stems. I'm going to let go now of the cursor, of the left mouse button, and I'm going to come over here. And this really means very little to us, it's, but it's a 3D map of the HSL, and we're going to preview. And we've got ourselves a pretty good mass going on. And not only that, while the preview is on, we can actually refine this mask somewhat. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button, paint over that a little bit to include a little bit more. And again, this mask doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be, you know, pretty reasonable. If I turn the preview off, we can see we want to include this area as well which really isn't very, very different, which is not very different from some of this background. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, I can fill that area in very nicely. Let's try to make some of this part of the mask. And Hayes was right. Again, I apologize <laughs> if I got that mispronounced. Um, it really makes a very nice for very nice, difficult masking. Now, this thing here is not artifact. If we look at that, I'm going to turn the preview off. That's actually the side piece of one of these stems. So that may be a little tough to include, but let's give it a little try. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to hit Control-Z. Let's give it one more little shot there, see if we can include a little more. Well, let's, let's see. Yeah. And let's see if we can include this little part here. And by including this little part, we also got a little bit more of this in. And you'll see that's not the edge of the tomato. If I turn the preview off, that's actually a part of the stem. We'll turn the preview on. And again, yeah, we have a couple little extraneous areas we might want to mask out once we get this mask into Photoshop, but that's trivial. You could just take a pack, a black paintbrush and be done with that in, in less than a second. Maybe a little bit right here, too. That would take literally a second to take care of. So we've got a pretty nice mask here. I'm going to turn the preview off. We could go to the AB grid, and we see that our colors in the stem are here. We might want to make them a little greener with the mask. And again, I'll turn the AB off and on. You know, it's subtle. I'll exaggerate it just to, just for exaggeration's sake much more than I normally would, just to show you we've made a real change there. But the point, obviously, there it's off. The point isn't to make the change. The point is that we want to get this mask into Photoshop. So let's go back to the mask. And let's send this LUT over to Photoshop. And I, again, I'm, I'm really pretty impressed with how that 3D HSL worked. So let's send this LUT over to Photoshop. And the LUT comes in right here at the top of our layer stack. And you can see it's made those stems very green. Again, in an exaggerated way as I did it. And I'll turn that off and on. And you can see the, uh, you can see the color change. But our mask is all white. And the reason is the masking is internal to 3D LUT Creator. It has applied the mask so that we're just changing the color of these stems, but we have no way to access that mask once that LUT comes over to Photoshop. And you'll see if we go to the Channels tab, here's the 3D LUT Creator mask in an alpha channel, which is just white. And that here's our RGB channels. And this white mask just represents this white mask. So 
we've made the change, but we can't access that mask if we want to do other things with that mask in Photoshop. How do we remedy that? I'm going to change the name of this. We'll just make it one, because as we learned last week, you can't have more than one LUT in Photoshop. I could have easily also just delete this layer if I want. And while it might be easier to just delete it, I'm just going to show you that should you choose to keep it. Before we do this little trick, you have to turn it off. Otherwise, it'll do some funky double masking because it already has an internal mask. So let's just forget this layer for a moment and go back to 3D LUT Creator where I'm going to show you how you can get hold of that 3D LUT Creator mask. So here we are back in 3D LUT Creator and I'm going to turn the mask preview button on and there's our mask. And with the mask preview button on, I'm going to send the LUT to Photoshop. And now we have an image of our mask. However, the mask is white because it's showing everything through. But if we go to the channels palette, we now have a black and white image here. And all of these channels are the same. And all of these channels are in fact our mask. So all we need to do is pick any of these channels. It doesn't matter. We can pick the red. We can right click and choose duplicate channel. The default is the copy of whatever channel. Red copy is the name, but we can change that to stems mask. Press OK. And now you can see right down here, we have stems mask as an alpha channel. And as you know, a mask is just an alpha channel. And so now we've saved that mask. But how do we get back to our original image? We go back to layers. We simply delete this layer. We're back to our original image. But we've saved our mask. How do we use it? Simple. We apply the mask as a selection. I'm going to hold down the control button, command on a Mac, click on that mask, and it's now loaded that mask as a selection. We go back to the layers palette and we can choose anything we want. Let's take a layer. Oh, I don't know. This is just for demonstration. Let's go with a uh, curves layer. And now, here's our new curves layer with the mask attach, attached to it. So, if we wanted to brighten, darken, do whatever we want, we have use of that mask. And of course, it's really very easy if we ever want to reuse this mask. We can either load it as a selection again like we did before, or... I don't know. Let's take something else to demonstrate that's a little crazy. Let's go black and white. We can right click and delete that layer mask. And if we want to use this mask once again, all we have to do is highlight it, hold down Alt on a Windows machine or Option, I believe, on a Mac, and left click and drag it up to that layer. And we've re reused that mask. And you can see that the stems have turned black and white. And we really have a very nice mask. So just to repeat and show you how quickly this can be done, I'm going to delete that, delete that. Let's delete our original LUT layer. We'll go to the channels. Let's delete all the stuff and go back to where we were at the start. So now we're at our original state. We are simply going to go to 3D LUT Creator. We may have started like this. We're going to turn our mask preview on. 
We're going to go LUT to Photoshop. Here it comes. We've got our mask. We're going to go Channels. We're going to pick any channel. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to name it whatever we want. And we are going to save it. Here it comes. We're going to go to our layers. We're going to delete this. We're going to go to our channel and load the mask as a selection by holding down Control and clicking on. There's our selection. Go back to the layers. And now we can add any kind of adjustment layer and bring that mask in. And so now we've demonstrated how to use 3D LUT Creator as both a creator of LUTs and a creator of masks. And of course, you know, if we really want that LUT that we made, we can go back to 3D LUT Creator, turn off that mask preview, and send this LUT to Photoshop. And there's our LUT. We'll turn it on and off. There's our changes in the green. We'll turn them back on. So you can have the best of both worlds. You can actually use 3D LUT Creator to make a LUT and keep the mask internal. You can use 3D LUT Creator to simply create a mask and not use a LUT at all. So there's really tons of options here. And 3D LUT Creator is, is really exceedingly powerful at both mask making and LUT making. Well, I hope you found that helpful and that you're now able to use 3D LUT Creator to, in order to make masks for use in Photoshop. Next time, I'm going to talk about how to modify LUTs, both your own and those that you might have purchased elsewhere. And as always, if you find content like this useful, I would truly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.